Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na ito, ituturo ko sa inyo ang wire stress substitution. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Ano ba ang wire stress substitution? So basically, ginagamit natin itong substitution na to to evaluate the integral of rational expression na merong mga trigonometric functions. Halimbawa, integral of dx over 2 plus cosine x. Okay? So, we have here a rational expression, particularly 1 over 2 plus cos x, na nag involve ng trigonometric function na cosine. Okay? So, paano ba yung substitution using wire stress? So, we can introduce another variable, let's say t, we will let that be equal to tangent of x over 2. So, kaya tinatawag din itong wire stress substitution as half angle substitution kasi we will let t, the new variable, be equal to the tangent ng half of x. So, pwede nating ma-derive ngayon yung other expressions for the sine x cosine x as well as the dx in terms of the new variable t. So, if we draw a reference right triangle, if we have this substitution for t equal to tan x over 2, we can make this a ratio. So, I can have t over 1 be equal to tan x over 2. And by definition, we know that the tangent is equivalent to opposite over adjacent. So, comparing this definition of tangent with the ratio t over 1, we can equate the opposite side to the angle x over 2 as t and the adjacent side to the angle x over 2 as 1. So, kung lalabilan natin itong angle na to as x over 2, we can have the value of the side opposite to this angle as t and then the adjacent side to this angle as 1. And therefore, we can find the hypotenuse, let's say h, using Pythagorean theorem, right? So that is sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So, we have h square is equal to t square plus 1 square or simply t square plus 1. Solving for h, getting the square root of both sides, we can have h is equal to the square root of t squared plus 1. So, therefore, we can replace this hypotenuse with the square root of t squared plus 1. Now, we want to find the sine of x using this representation. But, we have half angle for x, right? So, therefore, I can use the double angle for sine that is sine of 2 times x over 2 which is still equivalent to sine x, right? If we cancel out these two. So that we can have the identity for the sine 2x over 2 for double angle identity it's equal to 2 sine of x over 2 cosine of x over 2. So therefore we can find the value of sine x over 2 and cosine x over 2 from this reference right triangle. So we know that Sine is opposite over adjacent. So, the opposite to x over 2 is this side, t. So, we have t over hypotenuse square root of t square plus 1. So, this will be the value of sine x over 2 times, this time for cosine x over 2, its definition will be adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So, the adjacent side to x over 2 is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is still square root of t squared plus 1. And if we simplify this, we will have, for the numerators, we can multiply 2 times t times 1, which is equal to 2t, over the product of the denominator, so we have the square root of t squared plus 1 times the square root of t squared plus 1. So we can have square root of t squared plus 1 quantity square. And we can cancel out the square root with the square. So we are left with 2t over t squared plus 1. So therefore, this is the representation of sine x in terms of the new variable t. How about the cosine x. So likewise, we can apply the double angle identity for cosine. So we can rewrite this cosine x as cosine of 2 times x over 2. So that if we cancel this 2, it will be equal to cosine x. So what will be the identity for cosine 2 of x over 2? So, we can actually use 2 cosine square of x over 2 minus 1. That's the identity for double angle for cosine, right? So, what we need to find is the value of the cosine x over 2, which we already know a while ago that it's equivalent to 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1. So, substituting that here, we have 2 times cosine of x over 2 which is 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1 then we still need to raise it to the second power minus 1 so we will have 2 times distributing the exponent 2 on the numerator and denominator we will have 1 square over the square root of t squared plus 1 quantity square minus 1 Simplifying this, we will have 2 times 1 squared still 1 over square root of t squared plus 1 quantity square. Canceling out the square and the square root, we are left with t squared plus 1 minus 1. So we can multiply 2 times 1, that's 2 over t squared plus 1 minus 1. So we can combine this as a single fraction. So this one, I can write this as t square plus 1 over t square plus 1 so that we have the same denominator t square plus 1. And therefore, combining this as a single fraction, copy the same denominator of t square plus 1 and then subtract the numerator. So we will have 2 minus the quantity t square plus 1. So, distributing this negative, we will have 2 minus t square minus 1 over t square plus 1. So, if we combine similar terms, 2 minus 1, that will be 1, minus t square over t square plus 1. So, therefore, this will be the value of cosine x in terms of t. 1 minus t square over t square plus 1. The last thing that we need to find is the value of the dx. So we can use the substitution which is t is equal to tan x over 2. If we get the inverse tangent of both sides, we can have arc tangent of t is equal to x over 2 right and then we can eliminate this denominator of 2 by multiplying both sides by 2 so we will have 2 times arc tangent of t equal to canceling out the 2 on the right side we are left with x and therefore we can get the derivative of both sides so the derivative of x is dx and the derivative of 2 arctan of t will be 2 over 1 plus t square dt. So therefore, this is the representation of dx in terms of t. Now that we have derived everything, 
we can now try to solve this problem. Let's evaluate the integral of dx over 2 plus cosine x. So using wire stress substitution, we let t be equal to tangent of x over 2. Therefore, we will have the integral of the value of dx that we have derived is 2dt over 1 plus t square. So we can substitute that in place of dx. 2dt over 1 plus t square. Then all over 2 plus the cosine x, the value will be 1 minus t square over t square plus 1. And then, we just need to simplify this complex fraction. So, I can multiply both numerator and denominator by t square plus 1 or 1 plus t square. So, doing that on the numerator, 2dt over 1 plus t square times 1 plus t square. So, you can cancel out the 1 plus t square. We are left with 2dt all over so, we need to multiply this 1 plus t square as a binomial, distribute this to every term on the denominator. So, let's start with the product of 2 times 1 plus t square. So, that will be 2 times quantity 1 plus t square. Plus the product of this rational expression by 1 plus t square. So, we can cancel out this 1 plus t square. We are left with... 1 minus t square. So we can distribute first this 2 under the denominator. So we will have 2 times 1, it's 2. Plus 2 times t square, it's 2t square. Plus 1 minus t square. So we have the integral of 2dt over, combining similar terms, we have 2 plus 1, that's 3. Then 2t square minus t square, that's positive 1t square or simply t square. So I can put this 2 in front of the integral because it is just a constant. So we'll have 2 integral of dt over 3 plus t square. So I can also factor out this 3. We will have 2 integral of dt all over 3 times the quantity. 1 plus t square over 3. So that if we distribute back the 3, we will still get the same value 3 plus t square. And therefore, this over 3 or fraction of 1 third is another constant. I can just put it in front of the integral. So we will multiply 2 times 1 third. That will be 2 thirds integral now of dt over 1 plus t square over 3. So to apply an existing integral formula for this one, which is integral yielding inverse tangent, I can rewrite this first as integral of dt over 1 plus. So this t square over 3, I can write as t over the square root of 3 quantity square. Right? And then if we let u be equal to t over the square root of 3. We can get the derivative of both sides. Derivative of u, it's du. Derivative of t over square root of 3, it's just dt over the square root of 3. So from the original integral, we only have dt, right? We don't have this over square root of 3. So we can eliminate that first by multiplying both sides by square root of 3. So we will have square root of 3 du equal to canceling out the square root of 3 on the right. We are left with dt. Now we're ready to substitute in the original integral. So we will have 2 thirds integral of so dt that's now equal to square root of 3 du over 1 plus t over square root of 3 that's just equal to u 
with a square. So, we will have 1 plus u square under the denominator. So, the square root of 3 is another constant. We can put it in front of the integral. So, we multiply 2 thirds times square root of 3. That's 2 square root of 3 over 3. Integral of du over 1 plus u square. So, we have 2 square root of 3 over 3. This is already a standard formula for integral. Integral of du over 1 plus u square. That's arc tangent of u. Then, let's put plus c. So, let's transform back the u in terms of the original variable t, which is t over square root of 3. So, we'll have 2 square root of 3 over 3, arc tangent of u, which is t over the square root of 3 plus c. Finally, we need to transform back the t in terms of the original variable x. From Weierstrass substitution, we know that t is equal to tangent of x over 2. So, the final answer should be 2 square root of 3 over 3 arc tangent of t which is tangent of x over 2 over square root of 3 plus c. So, this is the final answer.